Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna show you two different ways to model this duck beak using Fusion 360. And specifically, I want to capture this indent on top of the beak. So without further ado, let's get started. So the two different ways that I'm going to use here are both freeform modeling. And the first one is solid sculpting, which I've used a lot in the previous videos. It's very similar to the sculpting process that you would do in the real world. So basically you have a chunk of Play-Doh or clay in an initial form, and then you gradually shape it into the desired final look. Here I have a duck head and we will use form to create a beak. To access the form tool, you can either go to the solid space or surface space. The form tool is the same, doesn't matter where you access it from. Uh, under the form menu, we have some primitives or predefined basic shapes. Some will end up with a solid body like box, cylinder, quad ball, and some will end up with a surface like plan, faces. So I think that's why Fusion put the form tool in both solid and surface workspaces because it can be used to create both. Anyways, I choose quad ball as the starting point for the beak because of its rounded nature and the similar topology. Here we first select the plane that we want to put the center point on, set the location of the center point, then set the diameter, the number of span faces, also set the symmetry, then we are ready to sculpt using the modify function. So I try to create an indent on top of the beak, but as you can see, it's hard to achieve the desired shape with just these limited vertices and edges. Uh, let's undo that. So in order to have more control on the shape, I insert an edge near the top. With that, it's easier for me to adjust the shape to the desired look. And this has been the main method that I'm using for organic shape sculpting. All right, there you have it. The duck beak using the solid freeform modeling. The second method is also a type of freeform modeling. Instead of shaping the solid body, we will construct a rough surface first. So again, we are under the form menu, and here I'm using the plan tool. First, I select the XZ plan, and then uh, I specify the center point on that plan. Next, we will set the dimension of the plan and also the number of faces. Usually, we will set the plan to be one by one to start with, but since we have symmetry here, so I set it to one by two. Now we are ready to sculpt the surface using modify. The idea here is to grow the rough surface section by section until we have the entire object covered. Remember to change the display mode to box display because we are doing the rough surface right now and we don't need to worry about the smoothness or curvature. Here I'm trying to capture the indent first, then I extrude the edge by holding down the ALT key and dragging the edge at the same time. And we continue doing this until we have the faces wrapping around. And as you can see, the uh, edges are not uh, connected together. You can use merge vertices or just use merge edge in this case. I kind of lost track on how big this should be, 
unfortunately we have this uh, reference on the side so I went back and changed the size a little bit next we extrude edges lengthwise and we can extrude multiple edges at the same time by holding down the alt key and just remember if we drag the features without holding down the alt key we'll be just doing the move but with the Alt key, we'll be doing the Extrude. Next, let's close the surface. Once the surface is watertight, it will become a solid body. Here, let's try the Fill Hole tool. As you can see, on each side, the fill hole creates a quad or a four-sided polygon and the triangle, but the triangle is not desirable. And in general, triangles and especially in end guns or a more than four-sided polygons are not desirable because they could cause unpredictable smoothing result or rendering issues. We should try to avoid using them when possible. So let's undo this. My solution is to insert an edge along the side. Uh, this edge will also better preserve the edge sharpness on the side, which is what we want. With the additional edge, now we have six vertices on each side. So we should be able to create two quads. Uh, let's try the fill hole again. And now it's creating two quads on each side. But as you can see, the two quads are very different in size. Uh, so we probably have to do it manually. So let's undo this. And uh, we are going to extrude the edge, then merge the edges to close this opening. Okay, now this end is watertight. Let me adjust this a little bit. And we will move on to the other side. Again, we will use the same procedure to close this end. Now we have a watertight surface. And once we finish the form construction, we will have a solid body. Now let's switch back to the smooth display and you can find the display mode in the modify function or just use the control 3. And once we're in the smooth display mode, we can see uh, the final result. At this moment, you can modify the object in the box display mode or in the smooth display mode. Here I'm trying to raise the top of the beak by moving the point. Uh, but I still don't like the result. Another way is to use the crease function. So here we select the edge that we want to apply crease and the result should follow that creased edge a lot closer. I went back and applied crease to another edge, did some adjustments. You can also use fillet to smooth out the crease after you are done with the form depending on what your design is. From this angle, you can see the result with and without crease. The top edge has crease, the bottom does not. And there you have it, freeform modeling using the surface sculpting. And oops, I lost track on the size again. Well, at this point, since the shape is already kind of finalized, I will just scale it rather than going back and readjust everything. And one more thing, let's say we're going to use the second beak that we designed. So first thing will be scale it to the right size and then align with the head and move to the appropriate location and rotate it if it needs to be.
So in this tutorial, we learn how to do freeform modeling in two different ways. If you ever stuck in one approach, try the other one. Make yourself comfortable in both methods. If you find this video helpful, please give a thumbs up. Also leave your comment if you have your own way of uh, using the freeform modeling. We would love to hear about it. Please consider subscribe if you have not. The full duckling design is coming up, so stay tuned. Happy modeling! I'll see you next time. Peace!